Welcome to our Sunday service. My name is Laurie Mickelson and I pastor the Northern Lights Christian Fellowship Church of the Nazarene here in Chetwin. Easter is just a couple of weeks away. We're still not sure whether we will be able to gather together in our churches for Easter Sunday services. That saddens us all. But we are rest assured that Easter still happens. Christ still died on the cross whether we can commemorate it collectively or not. Nothing can take that away. Easter is a time of loss. It was a loss for Mary as she watched her son die a criminal's death on the cross. It was a loss for the disciples because the one that they had followed for three years was no longer with them and they were afraid. It was a loss for Judas because the guilt he felt in betraying Jesus caused his death. But we know the end of that part of the story. Christ rose again. But that is for another day. On the weekend of March the 28th, we celebrate or already have celebrated Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday on the church calendar is when we recall Christ's triumphant entry into Jerusalem on the eve of Passover week. We know that Jesus had his face set toward Jerusalem and all along the way he had preached, taught, and healed the sick. He had experienced his run-ins with the Pharisees and they were already hatching a plot to kill him. For all the hearts that are restless, the Lord wants to give us peace. The peace only he can give at a time of stress and unrest. We don't have to go very far to be reminded that we are globally fighting the coronavirus pandemic. We've heard it in the news every day for weeks. Some have shared with me, I don't need to hear any more about COVID-19 for a while. It is in our face every day, 24-7. We want and we need to hear about hope. We want and need to hear encouraging words. We have lived this for over a year now. Sometimes we just need to turn the news off for a while and get quiet with the Lord. So here we go. About a week ago, a dear longtime friend sent me a card with a picture of a coffee cup on it. The wording on the cup said, coffee is always a good idea. She sent me this particular card because she knows that I enjoy my coffee. She knew it would encourage me and make me smile. It would remind me of times when we were able to get together. Over and over again in scripture, God has given us many words of encouragement as we face all sorts of difficulties in our lives. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Whatever you are facing, he does not want you to face it by yourself. We're moving into Holy Week a week usually spent reading and teaching on the road to the cross. A time leading up to the celebration of the empty tomb and resurrection of Jesus Christ on Easter Sunday. A time where believers rejoice because of the cross, because of the empty tomb, because of the resurrection. We want to celebrate because worship is in our DNA. Palm Sunday can't be canceled because we can't worship together in the building. Easter cannot be canceled all kinds of things have been canceled lately, but Easter is not one of them. Palm Sunday has already happened. Jesus has already triumphantly come and fulfilled the call of God the Father to be the Redeemer for mankind. Easter has already happened. No one will ever kill him again. He will never be put in a tomb again. He does not have to rise again because he will never be buried again. That is how we need to be approaching Holy Week, Holy Week as a reminder of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, on this glorious Palm Sunday, the beginning of what we call Holy Week, allow us to sense your presence as we open up the Easter story. We rejoice that we have the empty tomb to celebrate and what that means for the believer. But today, Father, as we look at Jesus' journey to the cross, may we have a heart that is open and sensitive to the things that lead up to the resurrection so that we might get a new and fresh love of Jesus. Luke 19, 29 to 44. As he came to the towns of Bethpage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples ahead. Go into that village over there, he told them. As you enter it, you will see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, why are you untying that colt? Just say, the Lord needs it. 
So they went and found the colt, just as Jesus had said. And sure enough, as they were untying it, the owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? And the disciples simply replied, The Lord needs it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it for him to ride on. As he rode along, the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. When he reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles that they had seen. Blessings on the King who come in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. He replied, If they kept quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. But as he came closer to Jerusalem and saw the city ahead, he began to weep. How I wish today that, all, that you of all people would understand the way to peace. But now it's too late and peace is hidden from your eyes. Before long, your enemies will build ramparts against your walls and encircle you and close in on you from every side. They will crush you into the ground and your children with you. Your enemies will not leave a single stone in place because you did not accept your opportunity for salvation. Sometimes, if we're not careful, Scripture can lose its appeal to us because we're so familiar with a story or a text that we feel that that is all there is to know. I would hate to see that happen. Cheers and jeers. One minute they're hailing Jesus as king, and then a few days later they're yelling to have him crucified and choose to let a murderer go free. Luke 23, verse 18. Then, arose, then a mighty roar arose from the crowd, and with one voice they shouted, Kill him and release Barabbas to us. What in the world changed? Well, their hearts were not on the Lord. It was on what he could do for them. The people wanted Jesus to meet certain expectations, and Jesus wants so much more for their lives. Jesus wanted to do a new thing. He wanted him, we want him to forgive us, but in fact, he also wants to transform us. Relationships are not often made in a storm. They are tested. Right now, our faith is being tested by circumstances we're all going through. Now it is the time to lean in, not pull away from Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ did not waver from his relationship with God the Father. He did not lose sight of the mission that he was on. Jesus headed into the city of Jerusalem to fulfill prophecies laid down in God's word. He passes through the Mount of Olives, a place where he would soon be praying for each and every one of us, a place where it would be so intense that he asked the Father that if it was possible to remove this cup from him, but God's will be done. To fulfill prophecy, he rides into Jerusalem to the praising and blessings of people who want him to be the king. They wanted Jesus to be king so he would break them loose from the mighty Roman stronghold. The Pharisees obviously didn't like him. They knew scripture. They knew that prophecy was being fulfilled, and they told Jesus to shut his disciples up. Jesus rebuked them and told them that even if they stopped, the very rocks would cry out and praise God because of what was going to happen. Jesus was putting into motion the love of God and a plan that would not fail. They wanted a king. Jesus wanted to be a savior. They wanted to change Rome. Jesus wanted to change their hearts. They wanted power returned. Jesus wanted to give them peace and salvation. They saw Romans as the problem. Jesus said they were the problem. To the believer who has a relationship with Christ, Palm Sunday reminds us of the journey of our Savior for the redemption of each and every one of us who puts their faith in Jesus Christ. Coming to Jesus is a radical thing. You can quietly accept Jesus in the privacy of your own home, but I don't believe you can quietly serve him because there's a change that takes place in our hearts and our souls because Jesus wants to take us from where we are to where we need to be. We need to be following him, walking in the same direction, staying focused on the same things. It is a path of commitment. So what went wrong? For them, they looked at Jesus for what he would do for them. For us, creating a Jesus of our liking instead of seeing what he's already done and what he wants to do with our future. Jesus knows everything about us. That can be a comfort and scary at the same time. They saw Jesus as a miracle worker and they wanted a miracle without the relationship. 
They wanted to be saved from their troubles, but not saved from their sins, because that would mean a change in their lifestyle. In today's wording, they had blind spots. Their blind spots kept them from seeing what was happening, was the plan of God unfolding in their lives. They saw the pain of Roman dominance, and they saw the unjust treatment they were going through, but they did not see a Savior intervening in their lives. Jesus came to tell us that we're broken. We need a Savior. Jesus came to provide for us what we could not do for ourselves, and He will participate in our lives and fix that brokenness that has happened. And we all have brokenness. Generational brokenness, the sin we inherited because of the fallen nature. Social brokenness, we're living in a broken world with people who need Jesus as much as we do. Personal brokenness, each one of us has things in our lives that have damaged us in some way. Jesus came to fix that brokenness and offer healing and redemption. This morning I invite you to look with fresh eyes at Jesus. Matthew 26, 52, where Jesus addresses the disciples as they were to take him away. Put your swords back in place, Jesus said to them, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my Father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen this way? Jesus was addressing a crowd. Am I leading a rebellion that you come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me, but this has all taken place that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. We cannot deny the love of God that God has for us. He has already done all he can do to show us that. He has open arms and desires for us to have open hearts and let him speak to us at our point of need. We may never know on this side of heaven the battle that Jesus won between Palm Sunday and Easter morning. It is a spiritual warfare that only the heavenly realm can imagine. But I do know one thing because his word tells us, and that is he loved us enough to go through and give victory for each and every one of us. Gethsemane, where Jesus himself says, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Jesus left his disciples three times to pray. He was also praying for you and I. As I close this morning, that is the Jesus we need to serve. When we get our focus off circumstances and on him, we rise to the top. Let's pray. Oh Lord, thank you. Thank you for the, the work that you have done, the work that you've done in our hearts, the work that you've done for mankind. Help us to believe even more strongly. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm.